Hello everybody and welcome to part three of me building my 32 Ford Roadster. In this video series we're kind of covering the basics and the fundamentals of not only just to build a 32 but really any hot rod. T's, Model A's, 32's, 33, 34's, you name it. And since I last saw you, the car is now a complete roller. So that means my rear end's been completely built, including my rear brakes, front's completely built, including my front brakes. But you'll also notice that I completed my front end steering and I've also completed my pedal assembly and we're going to talk about steering today there is some considerations when it comes to your pedal when considering your steering so that's why both are assembled here but in this video I want to go over the beginner's guide of the three main types of steering options that you have when building your hot rod So starting with the most traditional of the three is the original style steering box and steering column. Another really very similar type of application, but somewhat of an upgrade is a F1 box or an early F100 box and steering column. Now this is definitely the most traditional. It looks awesome, but there is some drawbacks. Since it is one unit with the box attached to the shaft and your steering wheel, if you're going to be using that stock mount, you're limited to the angle that you can drop everything, right? Because all that is already fixed and you're also fixed length. And where that steering wheel needs to be inside your actual cab, where that normally puts your steering box, usually is in the way if you're going to run anything bigger than a traditional four banger or flathead. If you're running a small block or if you're running a Hemi, something bigger than, again, a traditional motor, that positioning might be an issue for you. One of the other drawbacks to traditional steering, again, not the end of the world, but it's bump steer. And all that bump steer is, you're going to have your steering wheel, your shaft, your steering box, your pitman arms out here, nice drag length to your upper steering arm. But as you hit a bump on this side or any side and your front suspension goes through its travel, since this is all fixed, you're essentially changing the angle and that input's going to go straight to your steering wheel. Again, bump steer. You hit a bump, it steers for you. So just one of the things to consider when, you know, planning out your build. It's a great to look really traditional, but you are going to hit into some drawbacks if you're running anything bigger than a four banger or a flathead. Now, if you're going to be running this type of traditional setup, there is some customization that you can do to it. One of the biggest things is cutting off the mounting flange buying an extra flange or a flange kit then it allows you to change the angle and you tack on and then fully weld that flange in later once you have your proper angle and then you can also do custom mounts again i feel like if you're at that level and have the ability to do that level of customization again this is supposed to be a basic type of series here to get you guys into hot rods so we're not going to touch there but again all i'm trying to get is that if you are feeling adventurous you have the confidence there is a way to get this traditional style steering box set up to work with bigger motors and different applications so. moving on to option number two is cow steering now what cow steering is if you're sitting inside the car if your actual steering box is underneath your dash usually you know on the other side or on the inside of the firewall and usually visual or exposed kind of you normally right in front of your knees now what's cool about it is that your steering goes right into the input shaft your steering wheel goes right into your input shaft your output shaft comes right outside your cowl hence cowl steering pitman arm drag link that connects your pitman arm to your steering arm and it looks like a really cool setup a big benefit of that is that you don't have to worry about your steering column running through your engine compartment. So if you're running a big block Chevy, a Hemi motor, again, it does alleviate a lot of headaches when it comes to clearance issues. But again, cool looking system, also the most expensive of all the options. So something to consider, not only is it really expensive, but you also need to spend some time and material in order to mount that box somehow to either your firewall or underneath using some kind of steering column brace. So it's definitely the most advanced, but of course you reap the reward of all that hard work because it looks amazing. Um, so just something to consider. Option two, cow steering. Let's move on to option number three. 
Option number three is what's called cross steering. Some people also call it Vega box steering or Vega steering. Now, this is definitely, in my opinion, the most common for any hot rod, no matter what year, because it has a lot of benefits. Um, one of them being the performance or the handling characteristics of this type of steering. Since your drag link is running parallel with your axle and that movement is working together, you don't get any of the bump steer that you do with the other two types of systems because your drag link is running perpendicular to that axle. So that is one of the key benefits of a Vega steering box setup or a cross steering setup. The other thing is the clearance, right? So now this box is going to be moving forward. So now you have a lot more room for your headers. It also still leaves room for a traditional type of small block mount or hertz stout mount in the future. Again, you're using universals. So your steering column comes pretty much right in front of your firewall. So that also opens up some options for you when it comes to going around your headers if you are running a big block motor or a hemi stop motor. So now that you know all three types of systems, let's talk about how all three kind of compare when it comes to positioning because that is a critical thing to consider when working on your steering. So no matter which style of steering you end up going with, normally speaking, any kit you buy is going to put your steering column in the proper position for you sitting inside your hot rod. Normally, your steering column is going to be on the left side of your brake pedal or very close to it, maybe right above it to the left, but that's the general area. However, one of the benefits to running a Vega steering box is it does give you some more flexibility on the angle of your steering wheel and the placement of your steering wheel from left to right. So let's say you're a little bit wider, a little bit of a bigger guy, and you want to get yourself away from your door and more comfortable, that's okay. Mount your steering. Once you sit in your vehicle, you'll mount your column to the center of your chest. And no matter where that lands around your actual pedal, you can still count on those universals being able to connect to your Vega steering box. Again, just one of those last considerations that I want you to consider so that you're comfortable driving your future hot rod. So there you have it. There's your beginner's guide to the three different types of steering systems you have to consider when building your hot rod. I hope this gives you a basic fundamental understanding the pluses and the minuses to each one of those systems. In the next video, we're going to talk about Vega steering or cross steering specifically, the options that you have when it comes to pan hard bars, stabilizers, and how to take into consideration your travel when setting up your steering system. I did have somebody reach out to me telling me that they were truly enjoying the content and it was motivating to potentially start their own hot rod build. So that was extremely motivating to me. So if you're watching this video today, tomorrow, a year from now, thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in the next one.